morning, everybody. You ready to meet your healer tonight? Hallelujah. It's healing service, and we're in a series called Why Jesus Wants to Heal Us Now. Healing now is for now, and we want to just uh, emphasize the healing presence of God. We saw a number of people touched last week. We're believing tonight. If you're watching online, just open your hearts. Let's come into the presence of God and watch what he does tonight. He wants to manifest himself. Amen? We worship you tonight, Jesus. We're excited about being in your presence, Father, and in the house. Hallelujah. We worship you, the mighty God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, there were walls between us. By the cross, you came and broke them down. You broke them down. And there were chains all around us. By grace, we are no longer bound. No longer bound. You call me out of the grave. You call me into the light. You called my name. Then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We'll feel the darkness shaking, and all the dead are coming back to life. No back to life. We'll hear the song awaken, and all creation singing, we're alive. Cause you're alive. You call me out of the grave, you call me into the light, you call the name, then my heart gave life. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. And what a love we found, death can hold us down. We shout it out, oh, we're alive, cause you're alive. And what a love we found, death can hold us down. We shout it out, oh, we're alive, cause you're alive. And what a love we found, death can hold us down. We shout it out, so oh, we're alive, cause you're alive. Praise you, Jesus. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, and what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, cause we're alive, cause you're alive. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. Praise you, Jesus, hallelujah. And your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens. Awakens me, your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me, your love awakens me, 
praise you, Jesus. Mm, your love awakens me, awakens me. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You are awesome, oh, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, oh, God. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name. We love you. We expect great things, Jesus. Will come, let us worship the King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. And see what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. The King of Heaven, you conquer the grave. You'll free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Though Jesus, the Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Oh, you've done great things. Faithful through every storm. And you'll be faithful forevermore. And you have done great things. And I know you will do it again. And for your promise is yes and amen. And you will do great things. God, you can do great things. Like a hero from heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. And you will do great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Lord Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, God, you have done great things. Mm. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Great things. The hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. And you have done great things. You have done great things. You have done great things. You've done great things, Jesus. Mm, no love we pray, no love we sing, we worship you. No, 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 you have done great things. praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Praise. 
to Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. And there's no greater love than yours and that tells the dead to sleep no more. With just the sound, chains will break. There is freedom in your name. There is freedom in your name. Well, every breath I breathe and will be filled with praise. Just for one name, always only Jesus. Let my heart cry, glory, and my hands be raised. Just for one name, always only Jesus. We'll fill the earth. And flood the sky. Let all creation magnify. The righteousness will sing as evil shakes. There is power in your name. There is power in your name. Oh, every death I'm breathing will be filled with praise. And just but one name, always only Jesus. Let my heart cry holy and my hands be raised. And just for one name, always only Jesus. And every breath and I'm breathing will be filled with praise. And just for one name, always. Jesus, let my heart cry holy and my hands be raised. And just for one name, only, only Jesus. We'll sing the name that hush the sea, or oh, sing the name that hell won't speak. Jesus, hallelujah. Sing the name that took on sin, oh, sing the name that finished it, Jesus, hallelujah, oh, sing the name that hushed the sea, oh, sing the name that hell won't speak, Jesus, hallelujah, oh, Sing the name that took on sin. Oh, sing the name that finished it. Jesus, hallelujah. Every breath I'm breathing will be filled with praise. And just for one name, always only Jesus. Let my heart cry holy and my hand. And just for one name, always only Jesus. And every breath and I'm breathing will be filled with praise. And just for one name, always only Jesus. And let my heart cry holy and my hand be raised. Just for one name, always only Jesus. Down the one in Jesus. Father, we give you praise and thanks tonight. We thank you for your healing virtue. We thank you, Jesus, that you paid the price for us to be made whole. 
2,000 years ago it was paid for. We're taking hold of it tonight, Lord. We're believing for your manifestation in our lives. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Hallelujah. 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 Well, say hi to somebody as you're seated. Praise God. Good to see you tonight. Well, it's healing night. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. The Lord is our healer. And uh, he paid that price 2,000 years ago and a bit at the whipping post. The Bible says he went and took stripes. He took punishments for us so that we could be made whole. Hallelujah. And by the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are healed. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to give to the Lord tonight. There's an envelope somewhere near you. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, just subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you share these messages. People need healing. People need to know the healing power of the Lord. He, his will and desire is to heal everybody now. That's what he wants to do. So we're, our hearts are open to, for that. And we're going to uh, just bless him and receive. If you need to give an e-transfer, do it at uh, uh, info at berryvictory.org or you can give by PayPal as well. Amen. built on your faithfulness and my hope is held in your promises and I take each step with your confidence cause I am yours and I am yours you never fail you never will. I trust your name for greater things. And you will come through. You always do. I trust your name for greater things. You cleared away in the wilderness. You brought me out of my brokenness. You took my shame and you buried it. What you've done and I won't forget. You never fail, you never will, and I trust your name for greater things, and you will come through, you always do, and I trust in your name for greater things, and you will never your name for greater things and you will come through you always do I trust in your name and I will not fear for you are with me and I've seen this fight from the victory no power of hell send against me cause I've seen this fight from the victory and I will not fail for you are with me and I've seen this fight from the victory 
in no power of hell stand against me. Cause I've seen this fight from the victory. And you will never fail. You will never will. I trust your name for greater things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your Lord God. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, worship team. Praise God. Uh, we're breaking our week fast tomorrow. We're having a pop blessing after service. So, so just... Uh, j- just bring yourself, a, bring a first course and a dessert you can share. And uh, we're going to just celebrate after the service tomorrow. God, God has a great word for us tomorrow, but tonight is healing night. And we're here, we're here to, to expressly emphasize the healing presence and power of God. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> that song we just sang, we never ever fight uh, for the victory. We fight from the victory. Okay, the battle's over. Jesus won everything at the cross. Everything at the whipping post, according to healing, was he took he took sickness, disease, pain, uh, punishment, la, uh, or lack is all punishment. It's all punishment, and Jesus was punished uh, at the whipping post for what he didn't deserve. How many know he didn't do anything wrong? He was sinless. He was a sinless, spotless lamb. So because, he didn't get, because Jesus got what he didn't deserve, we get what we don't deserve. We don't deserve to be healed. Because, you know, the wages of sin is death. Sickness is just death on the way. Right? So, so the wages of sin is death. Sickness is death on the way. We, should, we all sin. We all make mistakes. We all fall short in some ways. But we got the righteousness of the Lord on the inside of us because we believed in Jesus Christ, right? So, so in our salvation, in our redemption, we get what we don't deserve. You didn't, get, you didn't deserve eternal life. You don't deserve healing. You don't deserve uh, freedom in your mind. You don't deserve the liberty of the spirit. You don't deserve any of those things, but we get to have them. Yeah, we sure do. And the, way, and the way we receive them is by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, so, so we, we believe. And Jesus, Jesus made it very clear. He made it very forthright. He said, uh, you know, everything on this side of Calvary's cross, you have to believe for. In other words, if you're looking for God to show you something, he won't unless you believe first. You got saved by believing in him first, and then he saved you. You believed in your heart. You confessed with your mouth that he was your savior, and then you were born again. You didn't get born again first. Right? People say, well, you know, if, if, I'd believe he was a healer if I could see him heal. Well, you'll never see him heal. You've got to believe he's a healer first, and then he heals. Hallelujah. So you've got to believe he's your healer tonight. And the price was paid over 2,000 years ago at the whipping post. Not the cross, at the whipping post. By the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ, Peter teaches us, by the stripe, Isaiah 53, verse 5, by the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ, we were and are healed. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he took the punishment so we can take the healing. He took the punishment so we can take the healing. Now, the key word is you got to take your healing. You have to take it. It's, it's, not a, just a, it's not an automatic. Just like salvation is not an automatic. So you have to believe. <laughs> right? You just don't get saved because Jesus died and rose again. You have to believe on him. Right? That's how you get sa- saved. You got to believe in your heart, not your head. You got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth unto salvation. It's very clear in the book of Romans. Well, that's how you get healed. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. I'm healed. The minute you do that, healing begins. Healing is not, miracles are instantaneous. Healing is a process. Hallelujah. You may not get instantly healed. That's a miracle. There's a difference between miracles and healings. Hallelujah. Healing, the minute you ask to be healed, Jesus said, well, yeah, I've paid for that. You're healed. And, the, and the, it's like an ocean liner. The commands are given to the guy steering the boat, and, and the boat begins to turn. Well, an ocean liner, it, it takes hours to turn. And the, if you were that guy, you know, the, the captain on the boat, and you say, okay, turn, starboard. And, and you look, nothing's happening. <laughs> right? You don't see anything happening right away. But it's happening. All the commands are given. People are doing stuff. Engines are firing. Rudders are changing. All kinds of stuff is going on. The minute you get prayed for and ask Jesus to heal you, it's being paid for. It all starts to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy wants you to come. But the enemy comes along and says, see, it didn't work. Because you start looking at the thing. You start feeling everything. And, you know, Oh, it doesn't feel any different. I guess it didn't work. No, it's working. So what do you do till full manifestation comes? You praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my healing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now we're coming in, in we're coming into a time when it's good, when it's happening faster and faster. Because time is collapsing. Now I don't have time to explain what that means. But time is collapsing. So what that mean, means in a nutshell is this. As we come to the end of the church age and, and are moving towards the eternal realm, where eternity is going to uh, uh, take over, time isn't working like time used to work. Time, time, what used to take decades takes a year. Look what's happened in our world in the last three years. Like it's changed. Real fast. The whole globe. Not just a country. The whole globe. Say time is collapsing. Now here's the good part of that. Okay. Because time is collapsing, we are walking more and more in the eternal realm. We're not quite in it yet. It's not here yet. but, But as we get close to eternity manifesting the second coming of the Lord Jesus coming back all that stuff the closer we get to it the faster uh, the Christian when he believes the faster the manifestation comes and the glory of the Lord's going to cover the earth as waters cover the seas hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah so time is collapsing praise God uh, let me explain it this way uh, when I put my hands on this is my wife so I can <laughs> when I put my hands on my wife, okay, uh, the anointing that is on my life, the Christ, the Christ, the anointed one, touches her. Yeah. Now, if she has a broken arm, and I'm not going to break it for the sake of illustration. <laughs> when, she, when, she has, when she had a broken arm, okay, if she had it, she, she doesn't have one, but if she had a broken arm... It takes six weeks to heal that naturally. It takes about six weeks. You put a cast on it. You hold it real stiff. And the, God put healing power in every body. There's only one healer. Doctors can't heal you. Doctors diagnose you. Doctors can help you. They can medicate you. 
You know, they can do stuff like that, but they, they can't heal. No doctor can heal. A surgeon can cut you, you know, cut you open, take out your gallbladder, right? He can do all, sew you back up. But when, he, when the doctor sews you back up, he can't heal you. God heals you. So God, in every human being, because mankind is made in his image and likeness, in every human being, God put a, a measure of healing of Jesus, his healing presence in every, whether you're saved or you're not saved, everybody can, the, he put an immune system, he put all that in us, all that, all that was given to us by God, and that's healing. But when the anointing comes, see, when the anointing comes, <clears throat> what should take six weeks takes six seconds. Why? Because when you lay, it's not, this isn't rocket science. When you lay hands, when you lay hands on someone, in the anointing, it moves them from chronological time, which should take six weeks to heal a bone, to, to, uh, to spirit time, which is instant. Because with G, where God and the Lord Jesus Christ live, there is no time. So that's why the book of Revelation says Jesus was crucified before the foundations of the world. Because in God, there is no timeline. He sees the end from the beginning. He's the Alpha and the Omega. So it's all there for God. He's just looking at the whole thing. Steps into it anytime he wants. Hallelujah. So the anointing just, just brings us into the eternal realm and manifests healing faster than your natural body has been programmed by a God from the beginning. In other words, he said, for those who will believe, I'll speed it up. So a broken something that should take so long to heal uh, doesn't take that long. <laughs> doesn't take that long. So tonight, he can adjust things, he can change things, he can, he can do things. With the anointing, he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he moves tonight, just as he did when he was walking on the earth, and he moves through us. As believers, say, I'm a believer. So we're here believing, every Saturday night we're here believing for the manifestation uh, of, the, of the Christ to touch and to change and to alter because it's our right to believe for that. And we've been proving that. We've been proving it from Scripture. You can't just, you can't just believe something because you want to. Uh, the spirit of Babylon is the spirit of opinions. We live in opinions. Everybody's got an opinion about the government. Everybody's got an opinion about this or that. Or everybody. Well, well, we don't, as Christians, we're not to live by opinions. We live by the truth. Say the truth is way higher than the facts. <clears throat> so the fact is you may have four-stage cancer, but the truth is you're healed. So I'm getting back to my original comment here, the song we just sang. We fight from victory, not for victory. There's a big difference, huge difference. If you're, if you're fighting for a, a healing, or you're fighting for a, a, a victory of any kind, maybe it's financial, maybe it's relational, you're trying to fight to see something changed, you are a beggar. You're begging. You're begging for something that's already happened. It's already done. It's already Say, if I beg for what's already happened, for what's already it's happened. not going to change God's mind. Because if, you, if, if, I, if I beg to God and change his mind, then Satan can come, become God because God's a liar. Never going to happen. Say, it's never going to happen. <laughs> what God said we have, we have. And if you pray to get what you've already got, you won't get it. It's like, it's like uh, you know, your kids come up to you and say, I want a new pair of shoes, and you go out and buy them a new pair of shoes, and they're in the closet. And they stand in front of you while you're, you're making dinner or, or you're doing something, fixing your car, and they stand there and go, I want a new pair of shoes, I want a new pair of shoes, I want a new pair of shoes, I want a new pair of shoes. Well, I, I purchased them, they're in the closet. I want a new pair of shoes. 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 They're in the closet. 
I want a new pair of shoes. I want a new pair of shoes. I want a new pair of shoes. Thank you for my new pair of shoes. Praise God for my new pair of shoes. Thank you, Lord, for my new pair of shoes. I want my shoes to come to me. And come to me shoes. Come to me shoes. Right? You've got to go get your shoes. Now, there's a currency that we attain spiritual things with. The kingdom of God has functionality. In other words, in the kingdom of God, you purchase things with the currency of the kingdom of God. You can't purchase it with the money on earth. Right? You can't take out a 20 and buy something from heaven. (laughs) Acts chapter 8, Simon the sorcerer tried to do that. He tried to buy the spiritual things of God with resources from this earth. You can't. You've got to use the currency from heaven to purchase the things that have been given to you in heaven. There are things in heaven with your name on it, set apart for you because God knew you would be born. Things, you got a, you got a storage shed. And in the storage shed, there's legs, foot, feet, arms, all the different parts of your body that you may ever need. God knew what you would need and have to deal with here, and he's made it available. But you can't get to it, just like you can't get to your bank account without an access card. You can stand in front of that teller, and you can shout and spit and be rude and try to get your money. But if you don't have your little plastic card and a piece of ID, they're not going to give it to you. So Christians, we, we come to God and we beg and we plead and we say, God, help me. And God, don't you love me? And oh, God, I'm going to die. And you, we do all that and God just lets you die. Because he's already provided everything you need. But he expects us as his children to know how to access it. Hey. And without accessing it the proper way, he's not going to release it even though he knows it's yours. Why? Because then anybody could go get your stuff. Anybody could go. If they jumped up and down loud enough and spit enough and cried enough and were emotional enough, anybody could get your stuff. It's mine, it's mine. They could lie about it. You know, you've got to provide your... You've got to know who you are in Christ. Say, I've got to know my identity. I got to know who I am in Christ, and I got to know how to get the things that have been provided for me from the place they are. Now, God made it so that not everybody can get to heaven, or you wouldn't even need to get saved. Right? Why would you need salvation? You wouldn't need salvation. You wouldn't need anything from God if you could just scream loud enough and cry enough to get it. God does not move by your need. He does not move by your wants. He does not move by your pain. He does not move by any of those things. He moves by the access. The currency of heaven is faith. The righteous live by faith. Okay, so if you know it's there, and you have faith for it, then you just have faith to receive it. Correct. It's a gift. It's not earned. It's not deserved. Healing is a gift. And it's available for everyone who will believe. Everybody. And the devil has taught the church for 2,000 years (laughs) that not everybody gets healed. Well, I'll say this to the devil. Not everybody gets saved. But it's made available available. for every human being. And healing is made available. And prosperity and blessing is made available for everyone who believes. Now, we got, we're here every Saturday night over the, for the, about the last four years, believing to renew our mind to this. Right on. And I say this story a lot because th- this kind of surprises people. But when Billy Graham started evangelizing, and he said, come to Jesus at an altar call, you're all, you can all come. Every denomination persecuted him. Every denomination said he was a heretic. Who do you think you are saying that God wants to save everybody? That was widespread. 
He was a nut telling the world that everybody was to be saved. Now that revelation has come to the church. We got that one. Somehow we've disconnected healing. <laughs> healing is in your benefit package. Go with me to Psalm 103. We got to look. I just feel to say this. Psalm 103. And, and I want you to keep your... Oh, you don't even have a place yet, so you don't have to keep nothing. Psalm 103 and verse 3. <clears throat> bless the Lord, O my soul, and that all that is within me, bless his holy name. Now, now the reason we act like this in this church, and if you don't know this, when you, when you read scripture and it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, it's not a suggestion or a history book. It means when you're reading it, you're to do it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Verse 2, get ready again. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all your benefits. Thank you, Jesus. Say, I have a benefit package. You've got you to remind your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. You've got to remind your soul of your benefits. Yeah. Now, if you, if you got in a, in a, in a terrible, uh, say a house fire. Your house caught fire, and, uh, and uh, you know, an insurance agent came to, you, came to your house and said, uh, we're not paying for, to fix anything. I know you had insurance, but, you know, we're fraudulent, and we don't care about you. <laughs> right what are you going to say you're going to say I got a benefit package I paid insurance you're going to fix my house you're going you're gonna to tell them off you're going you're gonna to stand in their office and you're going to make sure it gets done because you know you got a benefit package alright so here's your benefit package it's written down for you so just mark your bible the very first thing on is verse 3 uh, who forgives all your iniquities. So the first thing in your benefit package is you're forgiven. Yeah, so the next time somebody tells you you're not, yeah. you stick it up their nose. Or maybe not literally. I, you know, I'm not real pastoral when it comes to, to healing because, man, Canadians, we're just dweebs. You know... We got to believe the Bible. Amen. All right. So it says, okay, in the same verse, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Don't forget your benefit package. He forgives you, and in the same verse, he heals all your diseases. Yeah. Hasn't passed away, didn't die with the apostles, didn't die. It, it's the same Bible as it's always been. It, it, the, the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ are still paying the price for all diseases everything that's wrong i said everything that's wrong jesus hasn't changed jesus is the same yesterday today and forever he's not some sort of third watered down version that's living in you he's the real meal deal you got the full deal jesus his spirit is in you hallelujah hey Say, he forgives me. Okay, this is verse 3. He heals everything. He redeems your life from destruction. Say, he delivers me. He crowns me. Uh, he crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. That's an anointing. He anoints me. He satisfies my mouth with good things. He prospers me so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Say, I got a benefit package. So the next time your mind says, your de the devil comes to you and tells you, you know, you deserve to be healed or sick, you don't, you don't deserve healing, it's got nothing to do with us. It's got everything to do with what Jesus paid for. Say, he paid for it. Say, Jesus paid for it. Now, if I bought you a Rolls Royce and it was paid for, drive the thing. Well, no, I just don't feel worthy. I think I'll park it in the garage. No, drive the thing. 
Receive it. Make use of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I got benefits. And, and Isaiah saw it in the Old Testament. Isaiah 53, verse 5, he saw in the future, by revelation, the stripes that Jesus took upon his body that healed us. He saw it. Every whipping Jesus took, he took for every category of disease in the earth. 49 lashes. Didn't deserve them. Didn't deserve them. Took them anyway. So we get what we don't deserve. Say, I get to be healed. I don't deserve to be healed. I haven't earned it. You can't earn it. I just get to be healed. But I got to believe. We got to believe it. Hallelujah. Now go with me to Matthew chapter 14. I'm going to talk about something. We're, we're, we're doing a Thursday night series on Kingdom Keys. And this tonight's going to kind of overlap a little bit. But that's okay. Say, I got authority. Now, in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 14. Now, when you see Jesus minister in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, his ministry is now ours. What you see him doing in the Bible is what we're to do now. Now, I'm not talking about the cross. He went to the cross for you and I. Right? That wasn't his ministry. His ministry was healing people and, you know, he does that today. I said he does it now. Now, religion has taken this whole concept. So there's a whole denominations that say that healing isn't for everybody today. It's somehow passed away. Whole denominations believe that. Or it's random, or it's a mystery, or you don't really know what he's going to do because he's kind of schizophrenic. Sometimes he heals somebody, and sometimes he doesn't heal somebody else. No, it's not, nothing like that. He's the same to everybody. I said he's the same. It's available for everybody. What he did when he was here, he still does now because he's still here. Yes, he is. Living that life. Now, you, know, you don't see him walking around. But he's, he's in every one of us. He put the same spirit that he operated by after he came out of the River Jordan and was baptized in the spirit. That same spirit has come on the inside of us. That's what made you born again. In your spirit came his spirit. He calls you an alien. You're a new creation. In other words, you're no longer human. And you're not totally divine. You're this... His spirit went in your spirit. The Bible calls it in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you are now a new creation. Not a reworked one. You're brand new. Now, we got to renew our minds to this stuff because, see, it's our brain that gets in the way. Our brain gets in the way with what's happened to us on the inside of us. In 1 John 2, 20 and 27, it says the spirit of all truth lives on the inside of you. The truth to which we understand makes us free. Say, I get free when I get understanding of the truth. So if all you've heard is that, Jesus, that, that God doesn't heal everybody, then you've, all you've believed in your whole life is a lie. And, that, and what you look at the longest becomes the strongest. And so religion propagates itself through lies. So if you've ever heard a preacher say, now listen to me. This is going to sound harsh, but I'm a nice guy. <laughs> say, Pastor, you're a nice guy. <laughs> if you ever heard a preacher say, Jesus doesn't heal everybody, that's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> say, it's a lie. So in that area, your preacher's a liar. Now, I know it sounds strong, but it's a lie. <laughs> Anything I preach that's against the word of God is a lie. This is the standard. This is the plumb line. It's not because your great aunt Myrtle died because she was a good person, so God doesn't heal everybody. Right? People say experientially, well, I had a really, really great aunt Myrtle. 
And she was so good. She didn't even curse. She was just a nice lady. And she died of cancer. So obviously, God doesn't heal everybody. Now I want to say something. God doesn't heal good people. Ever. He doesn't heal you because you're good. Or you'd be in the Old Testament. And that didn't work. That's why God had to give us Jesus. Everything in the Old Testament was works. You had to do something to get God to do something. Now you've got to believe something to get God to do something. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay? All right? You okay? Yeah. 4,700 people fell over on the internet. God doesn't save good people. He saves believers. It is impossible, Hebrews 11:6. 6, it is impossible to please God without faith. So you can't be good enough to please him. Or we'd all be going to heaven without doing anything. Just doing good things. People are trying this all over the place. Good people are going to hell. And so some, some of us that aren't so good are going to heaven. <laughs> hey! Because <laughs> it's not based on your behavior, it's based on your belief. Now God works on our behavior, but that's secondary. He takes, see, we act out what we believe. It beca- In other words, our faith begins to produce righteous activity over, over, but sometimes it takes a while. Help us, Jesus. So the people look at the church and they go, man, if that's church and those people are Christians, like, I'm better than them, better people don't go to heaven. Just because you're better, I could be the worst doggone bad person but if my heart's good yeah. towards that's why Saul who did half the wrong things David did Saul lost his kingdom David got a throne in heaven named after him and God said David was after his heart and that's why everywhere when you read in the New Testament the son of David the son of David the son of David the son of David well David was a murderer he was an adulterer he had all kinds of problems his kids were rebellious he was a messed up dude but his heart even though his behavior wasn't perfect and it was worse than Saul's and Saul's lo- Saul lost the kingdom over over his heart but David got a throne in heaven what Jesus sits on Because of his heart. So don't look at the outside of a man. You look at the heart. Because there's some messed up looking, funky looking people that have a heart for God and want to change. And are looking for something. They're looking for the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. And religion wants to fix everybody up on the outside. And their hearts aren't any good. And they're going to hell. Can you imagine living your whole life, a religious zealot? You know, trying to be good, trying to do the right thing, not, not, not doing everything dumb on your income tax, not killing anybody, just, you know, living a good life. You know, not swearing and going to hell for it. That's what's happening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say, it's all about the heart. It's all about the heart. God makes it pretty clear. You can, if you have a heart for me, yeah. I can handle any weird behavior you got. Because yeah. over time, it's going to change. Yeah, <laughs> right? It'll change a little bit. You know, Everybody's at a different speed. Yeah. Praise God. We just love everybody. And you look to the heart of a person. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> you know, you can have... No, I don't... Okay, we're just... We're moving on. <laughs> Matthew chapter 14, verse 14. Watch this. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude. Now, when the Bible writes multitude, it means there was too many people to count. Right? Because it does record 5,000. So, you know, it's more than that. And then they put an adjective in front of it called great. 
a great multitude. Okay, so when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude. And he was moved with compassion. (coughs) Say, he was moved with compassion. For them, the great multitude, and healed their sick. Okay? Now, there was a lot of sick people there. He didn't counsel them and ask what they did wrong to cause their problem. No, I just healed them. Come on. Jesus is the same today. It's not based on your behavior. He doesn't heal based on your performance. He doesn't, well, you do these 37 push-ups and stand on one leg and turn your face like this and I'll heal you. He doesn't, he, he doesn't cause sickness to come into your life to teach you a lesson. Ever. It's a lie. These are all lies. The devil comes and tells you you're not worthy to be able to receive and that's a lie. He talks to you in your head. And he says, you, look at after all, everything you've done and, and all that stuff you've, you, you know, you, you, you sat on the couch watching TV for 15 years and all you ate was Twinkies. And now you've got sugar diabetes and you've got varicose veins and you've lost your sight because you've been looking at the TV and you're just so fat. He'll heal that person. Are you here? He heals everybody. He does. He heals every single person. Love you, Jesus. The perp healing is a dinner bell. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> Look how fast he moved too. Need healing for trauma. A lot of trauma. Doing good. Oh, I know. Come, come to you lazy boys. <laughs> Get behind him. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All trauma go. Hey! hey! He wants healing from trauma. That's what he's going to get. Hallelujah. 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 All trauma, all fears, all anything that's haunting him is gone in Jesus' name. It's gone tonight. You are, you are, you're totally different than last week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you. If you weren't here last week, he's different. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now that's how, that's how you should be. There's no prerequisite or requirements to be healed. It says, Jesus comes out. Hey, great multitude. Wow, there's a lot of sick people out there. And he was moved with compassion. Everybody say compassion. Compassion. Now that's a key to healing. That's a key to healing others. Compassion. Where does that come from? From your heart, which comes from love. That means you got to, Jesus loved everybody in that crowd. And he recognized that it was their right to not have anything wrong in their bodies. So many people you couldn't count them. There was prostitutes there. There was, there was thieves there. There was all kinds of different personalities and people in that crowd. He healed them all. Didn't ask them why they got into the trouble they did. He healed them all. And he wants to heal everybody tonight. He's no different. He hasn't changed. Hebrews says, he's 13th, 13th chapter of the book of Hebrews. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's now our high priest interceding for us in heavenly places. We have his spirit on the inside of us. The spirit of God is in a Christian. God, God is spirit. His spirit is in us. God's in you. Do you think God wants you sick? No. What kind of a sick God would that be? God doesn't want you sick. He wants you healthy. 
Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. There's nobody sick in heaven. Nobody's sick in heaven. Nobody has a nose cold, a heart, heart problem, a, 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 an immune deficiency. There, there's nothing in heaven. Jesus, the last thing he does on the earth is he prays a prayer. John chapter 17. And he gives us, and, and he prays a prayer that we are one with him. And Ephesians reinforces it and says we're seated with him in heavenly high places. When he died, you died. When he rose, you rose. When, when, when he went to the cross, you went to the cross. But it, you, when you believe on him, you go with him. It's really quiet in here. Come on. Well, Pastor, you're making it way too simple. I hope I am. This isn't complicated. It's not rocket science. It's freedom. freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot base your opinions on who God is based on your experience. You have to base it on the truth. Satan based his opinion of who God was based on his opinion of what he'd seen God do. So he's in heaven as the worship leader, and he sees God, and he says, I can do that job. I know he's God, but, I mean, he doesn't really do anything. This is how he had to think. And he says, I'm going to overthrow him. And the Bible says in the book of Psalm that God flicked Satan out of heaven as worship leader like a booger. He <laughs> and as Satan is hurling to earth, he said, where did that move come from? Don't you think you know better? Right on, right on. Don't you think you know better? God's way bigger than you've ever experienced him to be. And if his Bible, if his Bible says he heals everybody... Well, that was back then when he was on the earth. Oh, come on. Then why read it? Why read this thing if it's not for today? Everything that's in this is for us now. It's not a history book. He wasn't a good moral person. He was he was a minister, he was ministering out of the love and the life of the Father, and he didn't do anything he didn't see his father doing. It says three times in the book of John, I, I'm not here to do anything of my own accord. I don't do anything I don't see my father doing. So when when he spit in the guy's eyes and made mud and spit in the guy's eyes to heal his blindness and tell him to go to the pool of Ceylon, the father told him to do that. Well, why would God do that? That's how we think. It's going to get real messy. Say, it's going to get real messy. Before this is over, this is going to get real fun. Yeah, I'm telling you, this is going to get fun. Praise God. Our, she's probably watching tonight. Our pastor in, in, in Timmins, Cochran, uh, Pastor Marlene, had fi- fibromyalgia just so bad. She, could, she lost her job. She just seized up. I'm up there doing a conference, and the Lord's, and she comes forward. Like she, she was in, I was in, uh, no, I was in uh, Kappa's Gasing, and she came from, t- over from Timmins, and God said at the altar, she says, pick her up, squeeze her, and throw her on the floor. And she's got fibromyalgia. You know, so every joint hurts, everything. So, <laughs> and she was totally healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to do it the way he wants you to. You can't just, you just can't think you, well, this is how I want to get healed tonight. I just, I want the pastor to just, you know. Uh, ba, da, ba, da, da. You got, whatever that is. <laughs> Glory to God. It's the way he wants. I said it's the way he wants. But a key to it, now listen, a key to it is compassion. 
Compassion, Romans 5.5. 5. Romans 5.5 5 says that when you got saved, the love of God was shed abroad in your heart by Holy Spirit. So every Christian has God's love on, in the inside of their heart. Now that doesn't mean they live out of it. You can have it in there and not even acknowledge it. You can just live the way you did before you got saved. But you can live out of that. Now this is crucial to seeing healing happen. Because Jesus looks out like Gilligan. <laughs> and he sees a great multitude. And he and he's <laughs> and, and 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 he looks out. And it says he's, he's moved with compassion. Now, what does that mean? It means the love that's in him from the Father rolls in the inside of him. Pay attention. This is how everybody gets healed. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says faith worketh by love. Because you can have faith and strong faith, and that's not enough. You need the love of God with the faith. And that love will roll up on the inside of you and it will release compassion. Compassion is the product uh, of, of not feeling sorry for somebody. Come on. Right on. Right Too many people yeah. walk by people and they feel sorry for them and they say, can I pray for you? Yeah. Don't do that. No. There's nothing in it. Say, I, you can't feel sorry. Jesus wasn't feeling sorry for anybody. He saw the curse. He saw the devil. He saw, he, saw the, he saw the sickness and the disease and the, and the perversion of what mankind was not to have on their life. And, and, he, and he was in love with the people to such an extent that the love rolled up on the inside of him. And he healed them all. Before he comes back, there is a church that is going to see everybody healed. Not just now and again. No, not just, I mean, so. praise God, we saw eight, ten people healed last week. Yeah, thank you, God. But that's not enough. No. Everybody. Heal Say everybody. everybody. Now last week we talked about mercy. Yeah. Tonight I want to talk about authority. Yeah, right everybody say authority. 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 Hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> now let, let me just reiterate, I know it's, here we go. When's the last time you felt the love of God roll up on the inside of you? Like real, like for real. Like in other words, you didn't, you, you know, you see a cripple in a wheelchair and you don't go, oh, poor thing. That is the, the lamest feeling. They don't need you to feel sorry for them. Right? If I'm sick, you either raise me from the dead or let me go to heaven. I don't want to go, I, I don't need you feeling sorry for me. I, you get me up. Right? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's your responsibility. I'm putting it on you, okay? That is your responsibility. Hallelujah. 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 Love you, Jesus. So when you see somebody, you don't, you're not moved to tears. He wasn't moved to tears. He was compassionate. In other words, love rolled up. He just loved them all. He said, the devil has you bound. The, the primary purpose of, of Jesus coming to the earth was, was to destroy the works of the devil. Sickness and disease are works of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to skip reading our list, okay? Go with me to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Praise God. I'll read the list next week. Now, what, remember, because people don't, when you read the, your Bible, if it's recorded once in the Bible, it's for today. Because the Bible says, in the, at the, end, the last verse of the book of John, says that if all the miracles that Jesus did were recorded, the books would go around the world. So he did way more than it's written down. If it got written down, it was a highlight. 
If it was written down, it was a highlight. So it's not just to be glossed over and say, well, that was for then. No, this was highlighted, canonized in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To me, so that I can minister this way, so that people can minister to me this way. Look what it says in Luke 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together, and he gave them power and authority. And authority. Over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Well, that was the 12. They were special. We'll go one chapter. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70. Right on. And sent them two by two because before his face to every city and place where he himself was about to go. Hallelujah. 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 Say, all power and all authority was given to us. Now go with me to Matthew 18, 18, just so you know. Matthew 18. People use this out of context all the time. Matthew 18, 18. <clears throat> Assuredly, I say to you, it's read in my Bible. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What you bind on earth gets backed up in heaven. What, what authority you use on earth to bind or to loose hallelujah, gets backed up in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Matthew 28 and verse 18. This is talking about Jesus. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, this is after his resurrection, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth you go, therefore. You go. I got all authority in heaven and earth. See, see, this is, most Christians in North America believe that he has all authority in heaven and earth. But they don't believe you have any. Because he's sovereign and whatever happens to me is his will. Wrong. 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 Say wrong. <laughs> Say, I got all the authority he's got. I have all the authority. In his name. In his and believing in him. Yeah. Now this is, look at what it says. Go therefore and make disciples, not, not Christians. Not converts. Make di disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Watch. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank so what did he teach them? Yes. What were they to go into all the earth and make disciples into? Yes. Matthew chapter 10. Yes. Same book. Yes. Back up a little bit. Matthew chapter 10. Are you happy tonight? You're about yes. to get healed. Hallelujah. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse uh, 7. This is what he taught them. Now, this is what he just said in Matthew 28. Go into all the world and make disciples. Teach them everything I've taught you. The whole world. Teach them all. And this is what, this is what he said. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, here's a problem. We... We live in a culture that preaches love and acceptance. Jesus never preached love and acceptance. He preached kingdom and repentance. Never preached love and acceptance. Well, you know, you've got to love the LGBTQ people. you just got to love everybody. No, they need to get set free. Yeah, you do love them, but they need deliverance. You've got to get people free. Okay, look what he taught them. All right, we're looking at the red again. Look at the red. 
And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. So this is what Matthew 28 is talking about. Teach them everything I taught you. Tell them to teach them how to heal the sick. Okay? Don't, sit, don't go comfort them in the hospital as they die. Don't pat them on the back as they die with cancer. Heal them. <laughs> Say heal the sick. <laughs> That's why so many people with four stage cancer get healed in this house. Because we heal the sick. We don't make them feel good in their curse. Am I too blunt? <laughs> okay, it gets better. As you go and preach, the kingdom, you know what the kingdom wants to do? Oh, John, John only preached one message, John the Baptist. The kingdom of God is at hand. That's all he preached. God's ways of doing things are as close as your right hand. And if you don't change the way you think, if you, if you don't repent, change the way you think. If you don't change the way you think, you're going to miss the kingdom of God. That's all he preached. When Jesus took over from him, John the Baptist, that's all he preached. He went preaching the kingdom and repentance. And we preach love and acceptance. You just got to tolerate everybody. Make them all feel, this is what's going to get us persecuted. You know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Anything you lose because of that persecution, because you speak the truth, you will get back, pressed down, shaken together, and running over in this earth. Hallelujah. It's right in your beatitudes. When you get persecuted for the sake of the good news, kingdom of God, gospel, that people are to be healed, delivered, set free, and living in victory on this earth, when you preach that message, you will be persecuted for it. That's why nobody wants to do it. Let's just avoid the persecution part. Good luck with that. I know you are. Yeah, and it's, and it's breaking. Okay, you're ready, man. Come I'm here. I'm ready for healing. Come here. Get back up here, guys. Be pay attention. Want <laughs> <Why> healing? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Glory to God. Every curse has to bow. Every curse has to bow. Freedom and liberty is in the Spirit of God. Every curse is off of your life. You are free in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hey. hey! Hey! Come on! Okay, this is what he taught his disciples. And as you go preach, sing, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Four people in this house have been raised from the dead. That's not enough. I said that's not enough. One, one person was dead for like uh, 45 minutes. No pulse for 45 minutes. Well, you can't live after that. But they did, and she's still alive today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our job, he, this is what he taught them. He said in Matthew 28, make disciples teaching them what I taught you. Don't go evangelize them and get them to make a decision for Jesus and go to heaven. Make disciples and teach them what I taught you. Preach the kingdom of heaven as a hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give it away. That's what he taught them. Why don't we preach that? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's why he says in John 14, 12, I surely, I say to you, Greater things you shoot, shall you do than I've done, because I go to be with my Father. Hallelujah. 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 I did have notes, I think. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Just back up a little bit. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. <clears throat> 
And when he called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out. They're not even born again yet. We're born again. We are born again. Baptized in the Spirit. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. They didn't have the indwelling of the Spirit of God. He hasn't been buried. He hasn't rose again yet. He's, the Spirit of God isn't in them. And he gives them the authority. Listen. And he said, and he calls his 12 disciples to him in. He gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. So in Luke's account, they have all power over every sickness and disease. And in Matthew's account, they have all power over every devil. Every single one. And by Matthew 28, he gives that whole power realm of authority and power to us, the church. Go and do it and duplicate it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you've got to have compassion. You got to have something rolling up on the inside of you. You got to get you got to get righteously angry. You have no right to infringe on my family. You have no right to infringe on my mind. You have no right to infringe in my body. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. The temple of the Holy Ghost is not a warthog. The temple of the Holy Ghost is a temple that houses the Holy Spirit. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive on the inside of the church of Jesus Christ. And we've been running around with bushels on our heads, hiding underneath beds, trying to protect ourselves and walk by COVID rules. Come on, sick church. Come alive. Hey. <laughs> It's all right. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> we, we, we all got to be like him. Hallelujah. How hungry, how desperate are you? Are, is your heart alive? Is your heart alive? Hallelujah. Quenching the spirit of God causes your heart to come dormant. And God's awakening his church. And he's releasing re righteous rewards. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke says all demons are conquered by us. Matthew says all sickness and disease is conquered by us. He didn't say he'd, he would heal the sick. He said you go heal the sick. You cast out devils. You heal the sick. Now, we don't do it in and of our own strength. We know that. We trust the anointing. We trust the presence of the Lord. But when's the last time you got so mad you picked up a pastor, squeezed her in her pain, and threw her to the floor? It's got to be something rise up in you. You got to be... It's compassion. It's not, it's, it's, it's not, oh, poor lady. You gotta, you gotta know what you're dealing with. You gotta know the demonic. We live in a spiritual world. All sickness, all disease has a spiritual root. And all the medical system can do is diagnose the physical stuff. And they can't cure it. See, when you got born again, listen, when you, we're going to pray in just a minute. I feel faith coming. When you got born again, you had sin in your spirit. All right? You were sinners by nature. You were born into this world. You had sin in your spirit. Now, you got to know what happened. This is in Romans. This is in Romans 6, 7, 8. This is what happened. When God's spirit comes, because you believe in Jesus, God's spirit goes in you. It's like a hand. And, and you're rooted. you got all these roots of sin generationally, stuff people, all junk in your spirit. Well, if you're saved, it's gone. So just listen. Hallelujah. Now listen. 
When you got born again, this God's Spirit, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit went into your human spirit and ripped the roots of sin out. Ripped them right out and put in there righteousness. His righteousness, not earned, not deserved, not worked for, boom, put it in there. Now, that does not mean you don't sin anymore because of your stupid pea brain. Right? You've got things and patterns and thoughts and all kinds of... St- this is the battleground of the enemy right here. And the enemy comes to put stuff and lies and... Uh, uh, but Jesus put his mind in you. It's called the mind of Christ. It's in that righteousness. Say, the mind of Christ is in my righteousness. Plant it. So now, now sin that comes after you're saved, you know, say you... Say you were a crack addict. Say you were, say, you know, and you didn't immediately get delivered. It's not rooted in you anymore. There's no roots. It's in your head. Now you can choose to renew your mind. And it doesn't have the pull it had before you were saved. Because it's not rooted in you. Nothing of sin and curse can be rooted in your spirit. So now it's a, it's a problem of the mind. And that's why Romans 12 says you are to transform yourself by the renewing of your mind. You've got to know what the truth says. The truth says you're healed. You're not trying to get healed. The truth says you're already healed because it was paid for. And so, so now you're not trying to work from a sin nature to get something from God. You have got the victory from God. And now all you have to do is believe it. <sighs> now I'm not saying it's easy. To renew in your mind's not easy because you've been conditioned and people have taught, you know, good meaning people, parents, you know, school teachers. They're teaching everybody everything. Right? But the Bible's true. And compassion can rise up in you and you can get so mad at what's wrong. Hey! Right? Take your glasses off. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You ready? You should be ready by that. Thank you, Jesus. Everything tormenting this lovely vessel of God is going to leave. Everything. Go! In Jesus' name. Jesus' name is not a prepositional phrase at the end of a prayer. Right? What is Jesus' name? It's a position. He gave you his name. The name that's above AIDS, the name that's above cancer, the name that's above curse and sickness and disease, there is no other name higher than the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you say in the name of Jesus, you're not just speaking something, you are positioning yourself in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and when you're in Christ, you're seated in heavenly high places, and every foul thing has to go! So no more torment in this life. She's free. She's free. You're free on the inside. Totally free on the inside. The devil is a liar. Patterns, patterns of thought are broken in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Now, when God touches his body, Matthew was touched. It's Matthew, right? Yeah. Matthew was touched. Anna's touched. You're attached. Say, I'm attached. We're not Bill Gates Foundation, which is a bunch of windows. We're all tied together. Every joint supplying. So when somebody gets touched, when somebody gets touched, we're all getting healed. Come on, it's not a spectator sport. It's not a windows opportunity. It's, it's a, it's, if he's touching the body, I am part of the body. I don't care if I'm a toe or an ear. I'm, some, I'm on the body and the body is being touched. So I'm getting healed right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And I speak to every foul thing in every body to, ge- to leave this place now in the name of Jesus. Under the authority and the power given and invested in me by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the King, the Lord. And nowhere is he a king of beggars. Lost people beg God to do stuff because they don't know what he's done. You got to know what he's done. Prayer is the finished work. You pray what you know the will of the Lord is. Not to get the will of the Lord. Oh Lord, if it's your will, will you save Sister Sally? If your name's Sally, forgive me. (laughs) You don't pray prayers like that. He doesn't hear them. There's no faith in it. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith begins. And without faith, you can't please him. Faith begins where the will of God is known. So if you don't know it's his will to heal everybody now, you got absolutely no faith, and you'll never see you. i got to know what the will of God is. Hallelujah. Any ungodly attachment. I just heal Matthew. I speak to any ungodly soul ties in the name of Jesus. And I command his soul loosed in Jesus' name. His soul, his mind, his will, and emotions are encased in his spirit. But they're not necessarily renewed. So we cut them loose in Jesus' name. We cut them loose. And we, we command freedom in his soul from everything soulish in Jesus' name. So when soulless things happen, they don't tie to you to pull you in any direction anymore. You're free. Say, I'm free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, people today, church people are tying their souls to dogs. Dogs. Because dogs have souls. Dogs don't go to heaven. Oh, don't persecute me now. Come on. Now you're all getting depressed looking. There are dogs in heaven, but they don't go to heaven because you've got to have a spirit to go to heaven. Without a spirit, you can't go to heaven. But God creates dogs and he puts them in heaven because he knows you like them. But Fufu won't be there. Now I'm going to get all kinds of... This makes it buzz on the internet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> So we don't tie our souls to anything but Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I have a soul tie through marriage to my wife, but Jesus' soul tie is thicker. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now we're going to pray. We're going to take authority. Say he's given authority and power. Okay, now, now listen carefully. Authority is the uniform of the cop. The power is the gun. It's terrible to give somebody authority with no power. So Jesus gives his church authority and the power to do it. He gives the authorization and the empowerment to get it done. We just read it over and over again. Authority and power, authority and power, authority and power. Now listen, now listen. Here's what a lot of people believe. Well, he has the authority and power, but we don't have any. Why would you give a ma- okay? A bear's running at me down the aisle like a real bear, and I got a gun in my hand, and all of a sudden I get a thought, and I have the authority and I have the power to shoot the bear, and all of a sudden I get a thought, well maybe God's trying to teach me something. Maybe I should let the bear eat me. This is how the church thinks. This is how we think. Maybe it's God's will. Well, why would he give you the gun and the ability to use it and then tell you, sit this one out, let the bear maul you to death? All over the body of Christ, Christians think, well, you know, 
He has all the power and authority, but, you know, I have to go through this, you know. He's teaching me something through this disease. Stupid. Say, no, no more stupid. No more stupid. <laughs> if I got my shotgun and I got my khakis on, and I know some of you like to shoot stuff, so. <laughs> and I'm trained. And I'm ready to go. He's not going to say, let the bear maul you. Yeah, never, never. He's not going to say. That's why David said, I kill lions and I kill bears and this giant's nothing. Yeah. You got authority and you got power and you got to exercise it. So when you get an evil report from a doctor who's well-meaning, they're doing their job. They're, they're doing their job. But if they tell you you got four weeks to live, they're liars. They can't determine your death. Only God can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And your desire and your responsibility and your will determines it too somewhat. What, what you choose to believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you rise up and say, it says in Isaiah 53, whose report shall I believe? I, repeat, I believe the report of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And you just don't, you just can't, it's just not verbiage. It's got to come out of here. And that's what we're renewing ourselves to. It's got to come out of here. It can't come out of here. Christianity is nothing to do with your head. Other than you've got to renew your mind to that, the book. It's got everything to do with your heart. You believe in your heart, not your head. You don't believe in it. Every religion in the world, you believe with your head. But Christianity is different. It's not a religion. It's a relationship with the one who goes in your heart. He's creeping around in there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 So if you have something you know that is controlling you, we're going to break it. Deliverance isn't spooky, weird. It doesn't take a long time. I didn't have time to teach you, but Jesus, when he delivered people, He said two words, two thoughts. He said, shut up, get out. He didn't go through long seasons of exorcism, (laughs) handing puke bags to all the individuals as they heave their guts out. He said, shut up, come out. Over and over and over and over. Shut up and come out. I don't need to hear you. I don't need to hear you, devil, what you're going to say. I don't, go, I don't need to hear what kind of rights you have to be in them. Uh, shut up and come out. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, here's what's important to understand. You can't heal a demon. If there's a demon in a body, if, it has, if, if a person has a spirit of cancer, here's how you often know. If one person in the family got cancer and then it transfers to another person, it's a spirit. And the spirit of cancer, <clears throat> the spi- the sp- it, it, spirits like funerals. Because at funerals, everybody opens them up to false mourning. And they open their hearts and those little critters all find relatives. That's how it works. I do funerals all the time. I watch them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> the one that's the most like the one that died. Whew, there it goes. Hallelujah. And when I, if I lay hands on a person that has a devil, they will never be healed if I pray healing. Because you can't heal a demon. The demon has to be removed. And healing is for where there's, the person is demonless. So all... Sickness and disease comes from demons. But that doesn't mean the demon is resonant. Sometimes it comes and then it goes and leaves a sickness. And you got to know. Hallelujah. You got to know the difference. That's what discerning of spirits is. One of the gifts of the spirit. Is there a spirit there? Is it just the flesh? If you don't know, pray both. (laughs) I'm not sure. Devil, come out! Be healed in Jesus' name. (laughs) Just cover it. 
<laughs> don't act spiritual if you're not spiritual. Just, why'd you pray that? I don't know, just covering everything. Because <laughs> you can't heal a demon. So if you are here tonight or online and you have restrictions in your body, things that you cannot control, often demon spirits are resident on physical bodies to cause pain. So you could have a huge pain in your calf, and that could be a spirit attached to your calf that just has to be flicked off like a booger. But if you don't recognize it's there, and you're going to therapy, that, thing, that little monkey's not going to let go. You can therapize yourself forever. And that thing hangs on. Just clawing on there, little, little creepy little thing. Just right there, or here, or anywhere in your back, or your, it might, on your head. You can't seem to get your thoughts free. And it can just be removed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Migraines are always spirits. Allergies are always spirits. And we've rationalized all this stuff all for so long. And, and, and you know, well, it's perfume. No, it's, no, it's, it's strawberries. No, no, it, you know, it's none of that. Doctors are doing their best. But you go into that kind of realm, it's spiritual. Hallelujah. You know, the, the boy that was throwing himself into the fire, right? The Bible says he was a lunatic. We would call him an epileptic. That's what we'd label him today, epilepsy. <clears throat> we label everything. But Jesus said he had a confused mind. Hallelujah. Anything that makes you throw yourself into something destructive continuously over and over and over again is demonic. You got to get loosed of it. You got to get loosed of it. Hallelujah. 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 Suicide is always a spirit. It comes. It's real. Kill yourself. Kill yourself until it's like, oh, the only way I can get free of this is to kill myself. No. You have authority. You have power. Exercise it. In the name of Jesus. Any foul spirit influencing my mind in the name of Jesus, any foul spirit influencing your mind in the name of Jesus, be gone in Jesus' name. Be loosed of that. The kingdom of God operates through binding and loosing. That's the keys to the kingdom. I'm teaching you on this. Hallelujah. Say, I got authority. Say, I got authority. I got authority to loose somebody's heart unto salvation. I pray that the spiritual eyes of your understanding be loosed. The spiritual eyes of your understanding be loosed. This is what Paul taught us in Ephesians. The spiritual understanding, your eyes, your spiritual eyes be loosed to be able to see the truth. You can't argue somebody into the kingdom. You can't just beat them to get them to get saved. And you can't tell them what's wrong so that they get saved. You've got to open their eyes. Say, I open their eyes. Every day I open my kids' eyes. Every day I open my relatives' eyes. Every day I open their eyes. I open their eyes. Now they can close them again. Because it's not witchcraft. They're free moral agents. They can shut their hearts off. But every day I'm going to open them. <laughs> every day I'm ripping that, I'm ripping that blindfold off. And they, if they, did, what, oh God, they can cover it back over. But I'm here for the rest of my life ripping your blindfold off. <sighs> Until you choose to accept what you see. And it, it, it took my mother to three weeks before she died. Three weeks before she died, she saw and gave her heart to Jesus. But she never missed a day in church. She read her Bible and prayed every day, but she was not born again. She was a religious person, never swore, was perfect, she was good. She looked at the church, especially the ones I passed her, and she said, well, if that's it, I, I don't want that. I'm way better than them. That's what religion thinks. It's messy there. People fall over. <laughs> People spit and spew and things come out. And it's, it's messy. Hey! Jesus even made messes. 
little mud pies. He, it's messy doing the will of the Lord. And if you want to be respected in the religious community of the world and do the work of the Lord, forget that. This doesn't work. Praise God. Popularity has to die. It's not about numbers. It's not about what the world makes success as. Success is obedience. I said success is obedience. Worship is obedience. That's a worshiper. Somebody who obeys. So if you got something, stand up. That's binding you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even though you preach that, <laughs> I'm still a little bit anxious about mom, but I, I don't know if I need prayer yeah. anymore. <laughs> I just need a little less stupid. Oh, we'll pray again. Come on. Let's do it again. <laughs> Freedom in Jesus' name. Come on now, let's get that. Let's get the juice here. Hallelujah. 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 He's pulling up his socks. Hallelujah. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose him in Jesus' name. Loose, 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 loose. Loose, 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 loose. 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 Loose in Jesus' name. Looser in Jesus' name. Anything that's restrictive. Anything that's holding you. Loose in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Anything that talks to you and makes you obey. Loose in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Loose in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Loose in the name of Jesus. Loose in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Loose in the name of Jesus. From behind. Hallelujah. Whoops. Hallelujah. 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 Looser in the name of Jesus. Nothing restrictive. Looser in the name of Jesus. Looser in the name of Jesus. Looser in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we're good. Don't want to miss one at the back. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to move closer. Loose in Jesus' name. Hey, Daniel. Loose in Jesus' name. Don't sit in the iPad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. No restrictions. No restrictions in our bodies. We're loosed in the name of Jesus. We're loosed in the name of Jesus. Looser in the name of Jesus. All restrictions gone in Jesus' name. He's our healer. He's our healer. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not going to push you. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Looser in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Loosed in the name of Jesus. 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 Come on. Let's exalt the Lord. Hallelujah. We give you all. We exalt you, Lord. We worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. We worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what we long to do. We give you praise. For you are our righteousness. We worship you, 
Almighty God, there is none like you. One more time. We worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. We worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what we long to do. For you are our We worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. Hallelujah. He's our righteousness. He's our healing. He's our breakthrough. He's our pure mind. He's our souls free. He's our bodies healed. He's our everything. He is the great I am. He is the great I am. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the alpha. He's the omega. First and the last. He's everything. Hallelujah. 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 Well, have a wonderful evening in Jesus. Praise him all the way home. Thank him for a sound sleep. We'll see you for celebration at 10. Amen. Hallelujah.